Right, what we want to do is to form a square. We want to form a supramolecular square. Now think about a, a square. How many corners does a square have? How many sides does a square have? What bits of supramolecular Meccano, when I'm talking about atoms, I'll talk about Lego. When I'm talking about supramolecular chemistry, let's use the analogy of Meccano. Which bits do we need to use in order to assemble a square? Now, how's your geometry? Right, we have 14 responses. There's that teasing 15th response coming up again. Right, let's see. 16, well, congratulations. Okay, so the polling has closed, and we have 81% of you believe that a square has four corners and four sides. And 19% of you are taking the mickey. Okay, right, let's move on. So a self-assembled square, what would those corners, what would those sides actually be? Well, let's break it down. Yes, you're quite right. We need four corners and four sides. Now, square planar geometry. Now, you don't know much about coordination chemistry, and you won't know a lot about coordination chemistry, I'm guessing, until you get towards the end of chemistry 1C3Y in semester 2. So, if we want a square planar geometry, I have to tell you that platinum in oxidation state 2 form square planar compounds. And so you see a lot of supramolecular chemistry using platinum. You have to ask yourself, since platinum is not exactly a cheap or abundant metal, whether there isn't a better substitute for platinum. But platinum forms nice, labile, dative bonds and does this chemistry very well. So if you want just a corner, the way to get that is to take a square planar metal and tie up two of the coordination sites on the square planar metal using a bidentate donor like that. That's leaving two coordination sites <coughs> left which can interact with our sides. And our sides are going to be this molecule, which is hopefully becoming a little bit familiar, 4, 4 prime bipyridine, an ideal building block for linear supramolecular coordination chemistry. And that's what we get. So if we take those four molecules mix them all together, then all that's all you have to do, okay? You're not adding lots of catalysts or reagents to promote this. You just dissolve these species in that stoichiometry in solution, and what comes beautifully crystallizing out is a self-assembled molecule that looks like this. And you can crystallize that species and convince yourself and convince your peers that it does in fact work. So this is a real, as I say, a real crystal nap snapshot of what the molecule looks like. How about a muscle? Can we use supramolecular coordination chemistry to make a molecular machine? And the first molecular machine we'll look at is a muscle. Now, biological muscles, how do biological muscles actually work? Well, whether you realise it, when you're basically extending your muscle and contracting it, what's happening is you have something that's akin to a rotaxane structure. What you have are filaments which are moving through discs. So I can animate this. That really doesn't work in a handout. So let's animate this. We have a biological muscle, which is a filament moving between a disc, and we have two of these things moving together, and so you have, if you like, a pair of connected rotaxane molecules. That's essentially what we're aiming for, and that is a very good model for how a biological muscle actually works. It may be